Welcome back to The Hue News, your weekly slice of 3D printing updates, maker stories and creative inspiration. I'm Rav and if you're enjoying these weekly roundups, feel free to like, subscribe and drop a comment below. It generally helps the channel grow. Right then, let's dive into this week's stories. Bamboo Labs has revealed its latest machine, the H2C, a next-generation multi-material 3D printer with a completely redesigned filament handling system. Early previews highlight faster material switching, far cleaner transition, and improved handling of trickier filaments like flexibles and engineer-grade polymers. Creative Blog even describes it as the printer that could finally put an end to printer poo. The focus this time is reliability, cleaner purges and efficiency, three areas where multi-material printing usually struggles. We'll have more once reviews start landing, but it's shaping up to be a significant step forward. HP has finally stepped into the filament-based 3D printing world with the launch of the HP IF600HT, their first ever high temperature industry FDM machine. For years, HP has focused almost exclusively on M. JF technology, so the major shift and its signal that high performance filament printing is becoming too important to ignore. The IF600HT is built for serious engineering material, including PEEK, PEKK, PPSU, and a range of high temp nylons. It features a hot end capable of reaching 600 degrees Celsius, a heated chamber optimized for warp prone polymers and a workflow integrated directly into HP's industrial ecosystem. This move places HP in direct competitions with brands like Intamis, Robus, and Stratus. It could shake up the high temperature FDM market quite significantly. Over at Formnext, Prusa's Core 1 has gained the ability to print up to eight materials thanks to a new upgrade developed in collaboration with Bontech called Index. This is a drop in the multi-material system designed specifically for the Core 1 and early demonstrations have been extremely impressive with fast switching, clean transitions and fewer purge related issues. The TCT magazine notes that the index is designed to avoid the classic MMU headaches, slow purges, jams, tangles and all the usual frustration. The partnership between Prusa and Bontech is a big movement showing a shift towards shared development rather than Prusa engineering everything in-house. For makers who want multi-material printing without the chaos, this could be a very welcome option. For our feature story, we're taking a deep dive into Apple's decision to manufacture certain Apple Watch cases using 3D printed titanium. Apple calls the process digital metal forming, which allows them to precisely map internal structures in titanium. This means they can create components that are stronger, lighter, and shaped in ways that traditional machining simply can't achieve. The big shift here is scale. Apple isn't running experiments, they're mass producing consumer electronics using additive manufacturing. Here's what makes this significant. A huge win in both sustainability and production efficiency with up to 40% less material waste. The printed cases offer improved strength to weight ratios thanks to internal structural mapping. Whether Apple adopts this technology, suppliers, partners and competitors tend to follow. This could accelerate adoption of metal additive manufacturing across consumer electronics far faster than anticipated. It's one of the clearest signs, yet additive manufacturing isn't the future. It's already a part of the mainstream production. And that wraps up the Hue News for today. If you enjoyed today's update, feel free to like, subscribe and drop your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, same time, same place.